Have you ever wanted to trade lives with someone else? I'm pretty sure all of us have had thought that same question at some point in our lives, maybe especially when we were kids, when so-and-so had a better bike than you, or when so-and-so had a better birthday party than you. We can use that same imagination and ask that same question in our adulthood and even in our 30s. Take, for example, whenever Meghan Markle married um, Prince Harry, it was an amazing event. It was a wedding. It was beautiful. It was awesome. But I didn't really have that desire to want to be Meghan Markle. A lot of women did, but this one didn't. You know why? Because Meghan Markle is Meghan Markle. And I'm Tatiana. And I did not want to go through the same stuff that Megan had to go through in order to marry this man. She had to sacrifice a lot of things, including her platform, including her job, her career trajectory. She had to leave her country, her home, to go to England to be with him and be part of the royal family. And they have a whole set of rules and things they have to go through. On top of all of that, planning a wedding, planning an interracial wedding, planning an international wedding, um, dealing with your family members on one side that was cutting up and acting a whole fool, including your daddy. You know what? After I look at all these facts, I see that there's just some things that I am not willing to tolerate and go through just to say that I had a royal wedding. But I'm not going to hate on her. I'm going to give her kudos. I'm like, do you boo-boo? Because that's what you were created for. And I'm created for whatever I'm going to have in my love life, in my wedding, in my marriage, etc. We always look at the final result, but we don't see the process. So a lot of the times we get caught up in that whole thought and fantasy of, I wish I had their life. No, you don't. No, you do not. And that's why this episode is so special to me because we're talking about very important subject here and this modern day coveting. It is the truth. It's Bible. It's all around us. And it's very easy to get caught up in one of the Ten Commandments, one of the big sins that God is not here for. So we'll talk about why you don't want anyone else's life and how you can better appreciate your own journey. This is your host, Tatiana Green, and you're listening to Journey Through 30. wanting to trade lives or live like someone else look like. Usually you imagine what someone else has to do in the day. You see all the positive aspects of their life, all the highlights, if you will, in their reel of life. And you want those same things. You want the spouse, you want the car, you want the big house, you want the kids, you want the banging career, you want the successful business, you want the vacations to all these exotic places that you simply cannot go to in your current state, in your current situation. It seems like everyone else who you admire and want to trade lives with has a way better life than you do. And it may not be all of those things all together. You may be picking one part of one person's life here and another part of one person's life there and try to create this life that you're currently not living. Um, Sometimes we can get caught up in the fantasy and kind of abuse the whole, um, what is it, life goal list or the dream board that we do every year, right? We put that dream board together. We put those life goals together. Like, this is my goals. I'm going to have my Cardi B year. I'm going to have my Tiffany Haddish year. And all that stuff. And try to compare our lives to someone else's lives based off of the success that they had. But I let me tell you, this is not that kind of thing that you want to do and put into practice. We should not want to have to model our lives off of what other people have already accomplished. Does that make sense? I think in some unique way, we all have potential to be successful, but we have to come to terms with what success looks like to us 
and we have to be willing to go through that process to get it. Now, I read Tiffany Haddish's book, The Last Black Unicorn, and after reading her book, I, it was confirmed for me that um, although she is winning in this season of her life, she's getting major deals in movies and TV shows, and she's making more money than ever before in her career. I do not want her life because in order for her to be who she is now, she had to endure a lot of pain, a lot of abandonment, a lot of rejection and abuse to get to where she is today. I don't think I would be qualified to handle that because mentally, like emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, I would be so torn down and ripped apart, y'all. Y'all gotta read her story if you haven't read her book. She talks about so much pain that she's been through. Man, it is not easy to be Tiffany Haddish. And she's still dealing with those things today. So when we look at her success on the outside, all the accolades that she's achieved so far and all the things that she's going to do, I can say to you honestly, after looking at her life and what she's been through, that I wouldn't want that life for myself. And I look at my life, I'm like, man, I didn't go through half the stuff that she went through. The more that we look at somebody's light and what they've accomplished and what that success looks like to them, the more we lose sight of what God is trying to show us about our own success, about our own journey, about what we were supposed to learn as we were growing up through our hard circumstances, and what we still have to go through in order to get to where he is bringing us. Like I said, this is a journey. That means that we're going to consistently go forward. We have to allow him to give us some revelation about why we have the life that we have and why we had the life that we had. So the past and the present kind of work together to add on to what we're going to receive and come into in our future. So that's a really good reason why you do not want to trade lives with anybody else. You do not want to miss out on what God has for you, especially if you don't see what you know in your heart you can achieve and what God promised you. You can get caught up in the game and like, man, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know. Maybe I'm not doing something right. You know, so-and-so did it. Why can't I get it at this age or at this time in my life? It's not your time. And you don't know that person's whole story and what they had to do to get to that point. So trust and believe you do not want to compare yourself to anyone else. Another thing that stood out to me was this wonderful song by Jonathan McReynolds called Comparison Kills. The pressure that we put on ourselves when we go on social media and see how other people live and we see what the beautiful things they have and we look at our lives and we just kind of neglect it. We kind of look at God like, why don't I have what they have? That is comparison. And like he said, that comparison kills because it keeps you from really appreciating what you have and being content and having that godly contentment and it makes you question God in a negative way like we are we are allowed to question God but when you start to question God in a way like you're not fully understanding his reasoning for why you are where you are then you can get distracted by the enemy and end up in a dark place called thirst and desperation and striving and covetousness and envy and jealousy those are the dark places when we question God the wrong way about where we are in life compared to others. So don't kill your future by looking at your present or looking at your past and wondering why your life isn't like somebody else's. Trust me, when God says in, in his word, in Romans 8 and 28, we have to understand that, you know, maybe our story isn't like going to be anybody else's. And that's okay. And at some point, you're going to achieve what he said you're going to achieve. It was so bad back in the day, back in Moses' time, that God had to tell him to write it down on the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not covet. And to covet means to want what somebody else has. That is low-key disrespectful to God. Because like I said, you're looking at someone else's life. You're like, I want that. I want their spouse. I want their car. I want their house. And you're not really seeing what God has blessed you with because you're focused on what somebody else has. And God is up there like, 
What is wrong with you? I gave you everything you need, but you're stuck on what you want, that you won't get the understanding that you need to be grateful for what all of this you have. And it's so easy to get caught up in coveting because it's glamorized in our society today. You want to consider repenting for that and really coming to God and say, like, look, I see what other people are doing. I want what they have, but Lord, just show me, show me to be grateful for my life. Show me how to be content with what I have. Um, how Paul said in Philippians, in, in Philippians chapter four about contentment. Lord, show me how to be content with what I have and what I don't have. And I thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Jireh, who is my provider, that you will give me what I need so I won't get caught up in the wants of life because you're always going to want something. Covetousness and the lust of the eye are kind of similar in far as sin is concerned because you have lust of the eye, which always see things and they want more. Lust doesn't really die. You have to starve it. If you keep feeding it with these material possessions of these other things that you covet off of other people that you want, you're not going to stop. Even after you achieve what they have, if you get the same exact car as somebody else, you're still going to want something more because that lust hasn't been addressed. It hasn't been taken out of you. It hasn't been delivered out of you. If you are in that place where you're coveting somebody, anybody, a stranger, a friend, a family member, your coworkers, someone at church, get on your face and ask God to help you deal with your coveting, with your jealousy, with your envy, um, with you comparing your life, with you competing with someone else. We can't afford to get caught up in trying to be someone else or wanting someone else's life. You don't want that life. You want your life because your life is yours. If you were to have somebody else's life, you would have been born as that person and you would have been through what they had gone through. But you're not them and they're not you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I know you've seen the memes, you've seen the quotes that it looks all good online and on Instagram with goals and relationship goals, business goals, career goals, educational goals, all these goals. You don't know the hard things that people have to endure. I'm getting to a point where I appreciate the inspiration that I get from like married couples, for example. I see their posts and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I could deal with that husband. He seemed like he got attitude, but God bless him because I'm not the one. That's, that's their husband. That's not my husband. <laughs> I'm appreciative of what I'm going to get. Because I don't want anybody else's life. I don't want anybody else's husband. I want my husband. Tatiana's husband, not so-and-so's husband. And I will not compare my husband to anyone else. Because he's his unique, human, flawed, individual self. And so am I. And I don't want him to be like anyone else either. So it, it really doesn't matter what industry or what um, area of life that you're considering as far as comparing your life to others. It's always that you don't know the whole story because you're not that person. Y'all, this is nothing new. I'm just saying this all as a reminder that we do not have to look at our own lives in comparison to others and try to want their life and try to go after what they have and try to be like anybody else. You don't have to do that. That's not your portion. If it was, you would have it. So learn to be grateful for your own journey and what you currently have. And what does that look like? That means saying every day that, God, I'm grateful for this home. I'm grateful for my mode of transportation. I thank you for food. I thank you for my clothing. I thank you, Lord, for my bank account. I thank you for my job or my school my education, whatever it is you have in your life currently, thank God for that. Praise him for it. And the things that you do want, bring it to him and allow him to give you revelation on to why you may want that. Maybe you want something for the wrong reasons. Maybe you have the wrong motives why you want something so bad that somebody else has. Because I think it's healthy, for example, it's healthy to want to be married. But if you want somebody else's marriage, 
that's a wrong <laughs> that's a wrong motive. <laughs> if you want somebody else's spouse, that's coveting and it's a wrong motive. But if you want to be married, a godly marriage, there's nothing wrong with wanting that. So there's a difference. So God will show you through his Holy Spirit how to discern if you're doing this the right way or if you're doing this the wrong way. And continue to be in the wait and enjoy this part of your journey because you will get there at some point. If God put that in your heart, he will give it to you. Just be faithful. Someone else wants what you choose to neglect or complain about. I know it's cliche, but it's true. I don't want anybody to want my life either. Because I go through stuff all the time that I don't tell you all about. But I think there's a time and a season for all of those things that need to be said. There's testimonies that I have yet to talk about. And I think that my testimony will be worth what I had to go through. Because when I get on the other side, baby, <laughs> it's going to be so worth it. And you won't think about all that pain. I won't think about all the loneliness all the rejection, all the timidity and the fear I experienced spiritually, all the attacks of the enemy that I experienced. There's a lot of stuff that I've been through, but not a lot of stuff at the same time compared to other people. So I'm grateful for what God has kept me from and what God has allowed me to go through. So he knew what I was capable of handling. He knew what you're capable of handling in your life coming up. So best believe not everybody's going to be able to handle what you have been through, but you did because you're right here right now listening to this and you made it through. You're a survivor in, to some extent of something. So be grateful for that. Don't despise your season and don't despise your life because God can do anything with anyone's circumstances. Same thing with Tiffany Haddish, like, Anyone who experienced what she went through could easily have given up on life, given up on their dreams, and left it alone and just settled for less. Or in Gabrielle Union's book, which I finished as well, and the things that she endured in her life, um, being a sexual assault survivor, going through that, and still dealing with the ramifications of that, man, I can imagine what she went through and what she still goes through, the things that trigger her. But she's a successful actress and she's a mom and a wife and people want her life. Like y'all, y'all don't know what these people experience on a day to day. You don't know. So if you having trouble with being grateful for your season, just ask God to help you. And no matter what you've been through, God can use you. There's so many people in the Bible who are divine examples of God's hand on their life despite what they've experienced. You can ask Joseph. You can ask Esther. You can ask Mary. You can ask Jesus. You can ask David. You can ask Solomon. You know, there's so many examples in the word. So God is trying to tell us something in 2018 and beyond that despite what we currently experience or what we don't have and where we're not at yet or even what our past was. God still has an amazing, beautiful plan on this journey called life. And if we focus on him, he will take us to our destined place. He will lift us up. He will put us where we're supposed to be. But if we look to the right and to the left, and get caught up in what other people are doing and what they've accomplished and what they look like, we're not going to ever meet our goal. We're not going to ever meet our purpose fully because we got distracted. So this is a, a rhema word for all of us, including myself, that you don't want to trade lives with anyone else. It's not worth it. Hold on to what makes you unique and work that thing because that is you. That's your fingerprint on this earth. So make sure you make your mark and do it with purpose and be led by God as you do it. I hope this helps somebody. I really want to know if you yourself have experienced wanting to trade lives with somebody else. Be sure to share that with me in the comments under the video 
And if you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Journey Through 30 as we continue to have these discussions and some inspiration and encouragement for your journey through your 30s. So don't get caught up in the game, in the visuals, in the goals, and all those things. God has an amazing, beautiful, unique plan for your life, and it doesn't matter how you get there. The point is, you'll get there by faith. All right, this is your girl, Tatiana Green, host of Journey Through 30 and author of the book, Journey to 30. I hope you all have an amazing rest of the month of June, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.